Hi, I'm Vanessa from Lella Boutique. I'm taking over the Fat Quarter Shop feed yet again. I'm here with my quilted mini of Lovey Dovey and we're ready to get it bound. I'm here to share all of my tips and tricks to get the perfect machine binding. I have tried binding in a variety of ways over my life and this is definitely my favorite. I can totally appreciate being able to stitch the binding to the back by hand. Unfortunately, I don't always have time to do that. So again, this is a really great method if you're short on time, but want a really great quality in the binding. Okay, I am starting out with my binding strips. These are two and a half inches wide. And for this project, I'm using the herringbone print from Lovey Dovey. You are gonna wanna look at your pattern instructions to know exactly how many binding strips you'll need. For mine, I'm gonna do three total, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do is connect all of your binding strips continuously so you have one giant strip. You can do that a couple different ways. Some people will just connect them with a straight seam, like so. I actually like to connect mine at a bias. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect those perpendicular like that, right sides together. Now, if you're not sure which direction to draw the line, you can kind of like think about if I draw it here, it's gonna open up like that. Yes, that's correct. So then you're gonna go ahead and actually draw a line. You can pin those together, take them over to your sewing machine and just stitch right on top of that line. You're gonna clip the excess about a quarter inch away and then just press it. And I do press my seam open, but that way the next step, you'll see how it helps reduce the bulk. So I'm gonna clear that away. And here I have my binding, my long continuous binding, but I have it folded in half, wrong sides together and pressed. And so I'm gonna pull it out a little ways and show you that seam. So you can see I've pressed the seam open. So now it lies pretty flat. If the seam was straight up and down, it would be really bulky just in that section. So now we're ready to get started. We're gonna grab our project and our binding strip and we're gonna begin about five or six inches down for the top, and that's where we're gonna lay down that binding strip. Now, there was a bit of selvage on this binding strip, so I trimmed that off just to start with a super clean end. So I'm gonna go another five inches or so down, and that's where I'm gonna begin my first stitch. Now, the seam allowance that I like to use is somewhere between a quarter inch and three eighths, on my machine, it's basically the very edge of the feed dogs. So you can look for that. No matter what you do, you just want to be 100% consistent all the way around. So if you do quarter inch, make sure you're quarter inch. If you're three eighths, three eighths, just whatever you do, consistency is gonna be the key. We're gonna get started and I'm gonna stitch until I'm the same distance away from the edge. So it's gonna be between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch. And if you need to slow down and adjust, you can. I also recommend using the needle stop down feature so that the needle will stay in the project every time you pause. Okay, I usually guess and I think I'm where I need to be. So then you're gonna pull it away from the machine. You can trim the threads and then you're gonna fold it like this, this is how we miter the corners. Then we're gonna fold it back on itself, making sure that it's lined up with this raw edge. And from there, we're gonna just start stitching down from the top using the same exact seam allowance and just continue to the next side and repeat mitering it at all corners.
Okay, here I am rounding the last corner. I'm gonna do the fold and I'm only gonna stitch maybe two or three inches. At this point, I'm gonna pause and pull it out from my machine, trim the threads. Now, the next part, we want to overlap these tails by whatever the width of the binding strips were before they were folded, which we were using two and a half inch strips. I usually just eyeball it. If you want to you know, use the ruler and mark it, you totally can. That's where the one tail starts. Here's the edge, so I know right here is where I'm gonna trim. I usually just kind of fold it right there so I know that it's gonna be a straight cut. And now we're going to connect these at a bias again. So what I usually do is I will open up the ends and I'm gonna bring them right sides together. Really what's easiest is if you can kind of crinkle up your project a little bit. So you're gonna bring the binding strips right sides together at a bias. And so this is why you have to leave lots of room, like you have to start stitching five or six inches down from the beginning, just to make sure you can do this more easily. I'm gonna overlap them so that there's maybe like an eighth of an inch excess on both sides. Then you're gonna use that ruler to draw a diagonal line again. And again, you can use pins for this part. I generally don't just because I've been doing it for so long. But you can pin it, you know, kind of here and here and here and wherever you want just to help hold that. And you'll also want to keep your project kind of folded. It, this will make more sense in just a second once I get it stitched and I can give you a better look at it. So I'm going to sew along that marked line. If you're doing this first the first time, you can definitely test it out before you trim the excess. So right here, normally we're gonna trim the excess. But what's gonna happen is when you straighten out the quilt, it's gonna fold together where you just sewed the bias line. So now that I know I did it right, I didn't twist it up or anything, I can go ahead and trim the excess. And then I will generally just finger press that seam open before folding it back in half. So now, that fits perfectly right on my project. I'm gonna go back in and just finish stitching. I'm gonna make sure that I'm using that same consistent seam allowance. And once you reach the original stitching, just keep going maybe an inch just so that it overlaps. And then you are ready for the next part. Now we're ready to go ahead and fold this over to the back side. So flip over your project. I'm gonna start from right to left. If you're left-handed, you may want to go left to right. The first step is to bring the binding over and you're gonna be watching the seam from the front. You're gonna wanna cover it by a consistent amount. For me, it's generally somewhere between like an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press that in place just so it naturally is ready to fold down. Then you're gonna use Elmer's school glue and you're going to put a little line of it above the seam. Then you're gonna run over it with the iron again and the heat is gonna fuse it in place. Now the wonderful thing about using the school glue is that it's machine washable. So this is gonna wash out of your quilt completely. It doesn't gum up your needle or anything like that, but it just holds everything in place perfectly. So I'm gonna continue going down the side. And at the end, you're just gonna keep extending that beyond the quilt in a straight line. From there, you're gonna rotate it. And now you can see how we're gonna be able to miter the corner just by folding this down. So you can see right there, we're gonna press it. Start out a few inches. If you notice that you have little threads, I just kind of make sure that they're tucked into the binding, or you can trim them if you want. I don't usually. You could also add like a little pin to kind of hold that in place if you want, but you may find there are certain areas that you need to pull down a little more than others. Just make sure that you have that consistent fold.
Another question that I have gotten about this before is if it's super stiff. Immediately, no, it's not stiff. If you leave it overnight, then it does stiffen a bit, but ideally the glue is still gonna be above where you're stitching, so that shouldn't cause any problems either. Oh, and before I forget, if you have quilt labels that you like to insert into the binding, this is when you're gonna do it. I got these cute little custom labels made. What I actually do too is I'll use binding clips to just kind of hold that in place because in, in a minute we're gonna be top stitching and that way I know exactly where the label is and I can kind of take a little more care at that part. I will also say that I have done this for a long time, so I'm very practiced at doing it. Don't worry if the first few times you try it, it doesn't come out completely perfect. So many things with quilting, you have to just keep doing it over and over. We're all finished with the gluing part. So basically what we're gonna do next is we're gonna flip it back over and we're gonna head over to our machine and we're just gonna stitch right in the ditch. Most of the time you'll notice that you can kind of feel the edge of the binding and so I can feel where it is and so I feel perfectly safe as I'm stitching along knowing if you get to a section where you kind of feel like it's too close, you can kind of adjust it a little bit, but just see if you can feel that. We're ready to go. I'm gonna start in the middle of this corner and like I said before, I'm gonna just stitch right up against the binding. As a reminder, make sure your needle stop is down. Once again, if you have to pause, it's nice to keep it in the same place. And I will back stitch just a few stitches at the beginning. Slow down a little bit at the corner just to make sure I can pivot in the exact right place. And now I'm getting close to my little binding clips so I know that my label is right there. So usually I'll check just to make sure it's straight right before I get to it. Okay, so I am reaching the very last corner. So what I will do is I'll pivot when I get to it and just go, you know, half an inch just to overlap the stitches. So now that is finished and you can just see the white thread blends in pretty well, but it just barely is catching the edge all the way around. We're all finished and I've flipped over a corner so you can take a look at the stitching. You can see it's hitting pretty consistently all the way around. It caught the mitered corner really well. This is just my favorite, favorite method when I'm in a hurry because I feel like it looks the best. The stitches are super secure. This is gonna withstand a lot of love. All right, the wall hanging is finished. I hope you'll give this binding method a try. Don't worry if it's not perfect your first time. That just comes as you do it over and over. Um, it, this is my favorite method by far because it looks flawless on the top. Any mistakes are gonna be on the back. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my social media accounts at Lella Boutique. <laughs>